afternoon to all of you. Namaste. We're going to practice together again today. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Marianne. And please feel free to subscribe to my free channel and spread the word so that other yogis can or other people can also access this wonderful way of yoga. Now for today I'm doing a classical sequence of a little bit of of standing poses and we're going to end with pranayama with relaxation okay so the first pose is seated now if you are not an experienced yogi the rule is when you place yourself in a seated position your knees should not be higher than your hips so place enough support underneath i've got two foam blocks underneath me place pillows cushions blankets whatever you need and the further the support, the better. Now, place yourself in an easy cross-legged position. For those of you that know that there's knee issues, maybe you just had a knee replacement, you can sit on a chair. Okay, so sit upright, roll the shoulders back. Note which leg you put in front first, because you will have a habit. And we want to sometimes break that habit and not always start with the same leg in front. Okay, so I sit upright. Sukhasana, when the legs are crossed in an easy way. Now I'll take the hands up into Uddhvahastasana. Stretch, reach, extend. From here, we're going to go sideways. So put your hand to the floor. If for you, it will be your left hand to the floor if you're facing the screen. Right hand up and over. Now you can even bring the palm of the left hand to the floor. Stretch up and over, pushing with the palm into the floor, and then as you do so, you turn the chest to look at the ceiling. So it's a, a stretch and a twist, and it's a beautiful opener of the body. Bring your awareness to your breath. Inhale into your chest. Exhale into the pelvic area. Anchor your right buttock well to the floor, and relax your bottom shoulder. Inhaling and exhaling, last full breath awareness and full stretch. Open your body to receive the breath. Then with the inhalation you lift, arms out to the side, exhalation over towards your right side. Hand firmly to the floor, top hand up, roll to look at the ceiling, relax this bottom shoulder and anchor your left buttock to the floor, the opposite one to which direction you're twisting. Inhalation and exhalation. Breath awareness here. Full stretch of the body. With the inhalation, lift up, come back to a neutral, well-lifted position, and you stretch your feet in front of you, and you change the cross of the legs. I have to check my feet. I've got a mulberry tree, so forgive if there's mulberries underneath. Mulberry stains. Okay, so now we sit upright, once again crossed. And we're going to do an easy twist, so just watch me for a moment. From here, I twist over to the side. If you feel that you lean back to reach the floor, put your hand, fingertips to the floor or place some support underneath. Okay. In our arms up to the ceiling. Exhale, keep the spine lifted and then release towards your twist towards your left side. Inhale up, exhale, twist. Tucking the hand on the knee and turning. Inhale and lift on the inhalation and exhale, you turn. Lift the hands up as you come back to the front. Turn over to the other side, and for me, it's my right hand cupping my left knee. For you, it might be the other way. Lift the spine, don't lean back. Inhale up and exhale, twist. Inhale up and exhale, twist. Keep your breath space. Don't close your chest, even though you're twisting. And lift the chin slightly. And then arms up to take the weight out of the lower back as you come out and release the hands or to take the pressure out of the back when we come out without the hands up in the sky 
then sometimes there's compression and we don't want that. Now release the legs and for a moment just release the ankles and begin to come up to a standing position. So come up to standing, remove your props. And you're going to need a wooden block or a foam block, whatever help you've got at home or a, a book, whatever will work. You're going to place it between your feet to give stability for your mountain pose, your Tadasana. Okay, so the two feet are firmly on the floor now. Spread the toes. Whenever we stand upright for yoga in the mountain pose, Tadasana, we have to find the balance on the foot. So I must make sure that I'm not on my ball mounts or on my heels or on the outside or the inside. You've got to find that even distribution. So find the uh, ball mount of your little toe, ball mount of your big toe. Find the inner heel and outer heel. So find them and draw a sort of uh, pattern there and make sure that on all four of these corners of each foot, the weight is evenly distributed. It's a little bit like taking a car for wheel alignment. Everything must be balanced and even. Now from here, lift the kneecaps, squeeze the block, just use that to give you stability. Now your buttock flesh must go down towards your heels. Your inner thighs roll back, lift the shoulders, roll them back and stretch into your fingertips. Now as I take my buttock flesh down to the heels, I feel an inner lift of the pelvic floor. Get that action. Buttocks down to the heels, buttock flesh down to the heels, and you feel the front body lifting in and up. From there, inhale, take the hands up into Urdhva Hastasana, stretch. Lift yourself out of your hips. Feel the size of the body extending. Lift. Can you lift even more? And the chin is level with the floor, the eyes are soft, the back body is extended, buttock flesh down to heels, front body lifting, full stretch of the body. Now do not collapse the legs, just bring the arms down, still strong sturdy legs. And from here you take the hands up with the palms facing forwards. So now we focus more on the width of the body. So as you keep the hands there, feel the openness over your chest area. Extend, buttocks down to the heels, fingertips up to the ceiling, palms open. Shoulder blades are onto the back and then they slide down to those buttocks. Lift and as you release, no collapsing. And release the pose. Now you're going to put this block between your um, thighs and we're going to use our strap. So put the block between the top, the, between the legs at the top of the thighs. You can see my block is lengthwise. I make sure that it's not tilting upwards. So sometimes I just use my finger to push because I still want that action of buttocks down to heels. Feet are firm. They don't need to be together. You you imagine already the block between your feet also. The steadiness is there. The stability. You've got that imprint. And from here. You put the strap, I'll do mirror image, so follow me. You put the strap over your left shoulder. Okay, stand in Tadasana. Take your right arm to the side, thumb down, thumb up, thumb down, thumb up. Down with the thumb, hand back, and swing that hand onto your back. Take your left hand up to the ceiling, turn the palm, and reach for Kumukhasana. So if you can reach, you don't need the strap. Otherwise, there's a strap between the hands and you're holding. Otherwise, if you can hold fully, you grip. And the, uh, the awareness that you must have here is to bring this elbow as close to the ear as you can next to the body going up. And this armpit of the left roll forwards. You lift your right shoulder and you roll it back so that you do not shorten the size of the body. And just take a few breaths here, don't look down, bring the navel to the spine, buttocks down to the heels, even breaths. Eyes soft, and inhale, and exhale, release. Okay, so now you put the strap over the other side, over your right side. We have company, we have Pablo joining the session, hello Pablo. 
Okay, so now from here, we're first going to activate this arm, the shoulder. So you take your left arm out to the side, thumb down, thumb up, but the action is from the shoulder. Then thumb down, hand back, and hand onto the back between the shoulder blades. But I didn't bring the shoulder forwards. From here, you take your right arm up, turn the palm, lift the little finger to the ceiling, and then interlock the hands or grip the strap. You're going to feel that the two sides of the body is often very different. One can reach, one can't reach. Uh, because you've got that arm on the top, make sure it's not moving the head to the side. Gaze is forwards, uh, elbow up. Remember the armpit is rolling forwards and you're not dropping the left shoulder. The two sides of the body must be even length. <clears throat> Last few moments here of warming up the shoulders. This little sequence we've done so far, you can do every day of your life to maintain health in your shoulders. Last moment of squeezing the block from the outer thighs to the inner thighs into the block. And then push the block back with your thighs. Release. And stand for a moment in your Tadasana. And then you take your strap off and remove your block. Put your uh, block to the back of the mat and your other block to the other side of the back of the mat. Those of you that are experienced practitioners and know your body, when we do standing poses, sometimes we need a block. Sometimes the block is not high enough, then you will put a chair so that you can support yourself with a chair. Your body is your main prop, but sometimes we need help. So we stand in Tadasana. Our next pose is going to be Utita Triponasana, which is the extended triangle pose. Let me demonstrate. Step or jump. You step if you've got lower back issues. Then I bring my back foot in and I turn my front foot out. And I've got near an inner arch alignment. Inhale from here, exhale, reach. And that is what's why I've got a block. I can put my hand on the block, under my shoulder, and stretch my top hand up to the ceiling. Rotate my abdomen to the spine when I come up. Here we go, feet to the front. Let's start from scratch together. So you've got your blocks close by, but not in the way. Or your chair. And if you can't reach, you hold your leg. Middle fingers touch. Remember, you step if you've got lower back issues. Bend the knee. Inhalation, knife like jump. Turn, and I'll do mirror image again. Turn your right foot in, uh, uh, right, the left foot in slightly, right foot out. Okay, chest is open, so the chest is at all times facing this direction towards the screen. Inhale, lift your right hand up, exhale, reach for your block. And place it underneath your shoulders. And up you go with the hand. Let's just come up again and keep the position because the block is in the right position now. Chest is facing forwards. Right arm up. Extend. And down to the floor. Or hold your leg. Or to the seat of the chair. Now for those of you with shoulder issues, you can place your left hand on your hip if needed. Don't drop the head. Extend into the crown of the head. I make a connection between my back foot all the way into the crown of my head. There's stability. Stretch and around that long length of the spine, I can turn. Exhale. Inhale up and come. And feet to the front. Now get your block already close by so that you don't do what I do. Okay, so now you take your left foot out, right toes in. Now make sure you've got that heel and inner arch alignment. Your left toes should point straight forwards, the knee and the toes. Inhale and exhale. You go into your pose. Bring that block under the shoulders, press lightly on it and lift your top arm to the ceiling. Get a good and even stretch here. Extend, roll around the axis of the spine, make a connection between your back foot, your right foot, and the crown of the head, and extend. So really, if you push that back foot well into the floor, it will help a lot. Exhale, with the inhalation up you come, feet to the front, 
and lightly step or jump your feet together, like Tadarasana. Now, we've got the blocks again. Next pose is Uttita Pashvakonasana. Let me show the options here. A little bit wider than before. When I go into my pose, I bend my knees 90 degrees and I place my hand on the block and my arm goes up and over. And can be on the hip if needed. If this is a difficult action for you and you're more beginner, you lean your arm here. It's actually a resisting moment. And arm up and over. Okay. So let's do it together. So you've got your blocks. And we start from the mountain pose, Tadasana. Middle fingers touch. Inhalation, wide. Take the right leg out. Remember you rotate from the hip. Bring the left toes in slightly. Make sure you're wide enough. Inhale, as you exhale, you slowly bend the knee. Place the hand on the block or place the forearm on the thigh. Your top hand rested on the hip for that first moment. Check your 90 degree angle. Make sure your alignment is there and extend from that inner groin. And pull into the hip. So there's like a strap over your knee. And the direction is like this. Arm up and over. When you take the arm over, you bring the ear to the arm, not the arm to the ear. Stretch. Make the connection back foot and fingertips of the top arm. Take the inhalation and the exhalation. On the next inhalation, up you lift. Feet to the front. Turn your left leg out, right goes in. Make sure you're wide enough still. Inhale as you exhale, bend the knee. Is that feeling of extension happening here? Place the right hand on the hip for now and on the block. Bring that left butter bone forwards to rotate and then the top hand up and over. Even breaths. You can always lower the block to whichever height you need. Ear to arm. Take a breath in, a breath out. In our lift up, feet to the front. You can zigzag your feet once and then step or jump your feet together. Back to your Tadasana. Now we take the blocks away. And for the next pose, we don't need any props because we are going to do Viravadrasana. Two, the warrior pose two. So let me demonstrate. Wide legs. Once again, 90 degree angle. I keep my torso completely lifted, not leaning to the side. And 90 degree angle of the leg. Arms out to the side and gaze over the fingertips. Okay. Let's do this together. Back to your Tadasana. Fingers touch, inhalation, wide. Take the right leg out, left toes in. Now you must be wide already, otherwise that 90 degree doesn't fit in. Drop your two butter bones evenly as you bend the knee. Stay upright with the crown of the head going to the ceiling. And from here, feel somebody putting your left arm back as you turn your right hand to the ceiling. Abdomen gently rolling from right to left. So it's a little belly tilt to maintain the stability of the pose. Inhale and exhale. Inhale up, you come. Feet to the front. If you need to, you can rest your arms for a moment. Left leg out, right toes in slightly. The alignment is still there and that quiet bending of the knee. But keeping the attention into the back leg, not leaning into the future. Keep the spine upright. From here, arms out to the side. Feel the pull in the left hand as much as in the right hand. And just turn the gaze. Feel the belly turning from left to right. Stabilize. Be strong. You'll find the warrior inside. And then exhale with the inhalation up you come. Zigzag your feet once and then jump your feet together. Get your breaths. Okay, so 
we take it further one step, we're going to do the half moon pose. And I'm going to show it against my beautiful mandala. So let me demonstrate. To practice the half moon pose against the wall is a wonderful teacher because you, you get your alignment, but you get the stability and you can do the adjustments. So observe. I am quite close to the wall with my front foot, but not too close. I've got my block close by. And my, you will see as I go in, my block is towards my little toe side. So I am about this distance away from the wall with my feet. So I would say about 15 centimeters. Then when I put my hand down, it's directly underneath my shoulder. In line with the little toe under my shoulder. Then as I do so, I lift this leg and I rotate my top hip to the wall. I open up and take this hand up to the ceiling. Okay, so you are going to do it now. So find a wall. You can even stop the video if you take time a little bit. And you're going to stand with your right foot pointing forwards about 15 centimeters away from the wall, but align the foot completely with the wall. And from here, you bend the knee. You bend it until you reach that prop. If the prop is not low enough, you put a chair seat. <coughs> and then hand under the shoulder. As you put the hand down, lift the back leg lifts. Flex the back top of the top foot. Open up. Try to get the hip more and more to the ceiling. Roll your abdomen from the floor up to the ceiling and stretch the top hand in line with the bottom arm. Now sometimes you feel that you've got the strength in your standing leg that you can even let go of the bottom hand. Just play with that and make sure that your top leg is not too low, not too high. Just find that perfect height where there's no strain. The more you flex and work the foot, the more uh, you will feel action. And then bend the knee and step back. Oops, don't step on a block like I just did. Okay, so other side now. So you've got your block. Take the back, back away, otherwise you do what I just did. You've got your block. And your, for me, it's the left foot. I don't know which one you're using. That foot is in alignment with the wall. And I've got the block ready. When I go up, it's a bent leg. You can watch the action here. Bent leg. And hand underneath the shoulder. Flex the foot. Bring the weight over the leg, standing leg. And stretch up. So there's beautiful lines in this pose. Once you've got it right, there's just beautiful lines. And you will notice, don't drop the head. Extend into the crown of the head, flex the top foot, roll the hip to the, floor, uh, to the wall, and really work the legs. Feel them, stretch them, activate them. And then bend, you can step back and come up. Okay, so now we take this one step further. You can use your chair for your hand, the seat of your chair or your block or the floor. It depends on how your situation is with this pose. So I'll demonstrate with Pablo. From Tadasana, you're going to step or jump your feet apart. Turn like you did in the beginning for Trikonasana. Now, I've got my block already there. From Trikonasana, you are going to Place the hand on the hip, bend the knee. Hop in slightly. Find the balance now, not, not later. As I straighten my leg, my leg lifts. So the one leg straight and the other one lifts. I rotate as if there's a wall behind me. And if you've got your balance, you stretch that top arm up to the ceiling. And as I've said, you can use whatever height you need. If you feel secure by using the floor, you feel secure by using the floor. So let us do that together. Okay. You've got your support on your right hand side. If it's a chair, the chair is there for you. Okay. Always make sure the chair is secured with the wall or on a sticky mat. You don't want anything wobbly. It can be a little table also. You can do it towards the bed. 
whatever works. Okay. Middle finger touch, step or jump your feet apart, and turn that right leg in left foot out. First to strip or nasana, so let's not be in the future here. Enjoy and go into your triangle pose. It's the second nature now. From here, you come up, you bend your leg, place the top hand on your hip, you jump slightly forwards. Now you've got your prop ready or no prop. Chair, block, whatever. And your hand goes down in line with a little toe under your shoulder. Now look, I'm not up yet. People get very anxious here. You just want to go up. Slowly does it as my leg unfolds, my top leg lifts. And my balance was there before I lifted, not now. If you can take the hand up to the ceiling, you take it up and think of the wall. Take the top to the wall. Top hip roll back. Activate that top leg, bend the knee as you step down and come up. Take your breath. Step the feet together. Put the prop on the other side. Remember, you can always repeat with the wall. Don't rush into anything. Okay. Middle fingers touch. Step or jump. Trikonasana to the left. Hand on the hip. Bend the knee. Hop in. This is an important moment. So you hop in, you're not up yet. Block, floor, chair, whatever. And in line with the little toe under the shoulder. Now, I've already got my balance, otherwise I don't take the chance. From there, I unfold and I lift up. Flex. Extend into the top leg. Flex. Arm up to the ceiling and visualize that hip rolling towards the wall behind you. When you're ready, you step back, you come up, and you step or jump your two feet together. Don't worry, you will soon be like this. The bliss will come. Okay, so now the next pose that you're going to do is Prasadita Karutanasana, which is the pose with the giraffe at the watering hole. So you can, I'm going to show it sideways and I'm going to show it over Pablo. I'll try not to disturb him. You are going to use the seat of your chair or your blocks. And you're going to step your legs wide. And my toes are pointing forwards. I do a little back bend action here. And from here I hinge from my hips. Extend into the crown of my head. And my hands are underneath my shoulders. And lift my chest. Concave spine action. Concave. I lead with the chest up to the ceiling. Now from here you take your arms far forwards. Have a stretch. And then you just release your hands to wherever they go. Classically the head goes to the floor. And the hands are underneath the elbows in line with the feet. You can also hold the legs. You can also just stay to whatever point your arms reach and your head reach. Okay, so let's start together. Okay. Two feet together, hands on your hips. Step or jump your feet wide. So remember giraffe legs here. From here, the toes are pointing forwards and the outer edges of the feet is in alignment with the edges of your mat. Now, tailbone in, butterflies in, and just lift the heart to the ceiling. Open up. Inhale as you exhale, hinge from your hips, reach forwards, crown up your head forwards. Now, you put your hands on the blocks under your shoulders. Remember, I've got imaginary ones here. Extend into the crown of the head. Now, walk your blocks far forwards until your ears are in alignment with your upper arms. And now, this is a beautiful long stretch of the body. Bring your hands until it's in line with your feet. If impossible, hold the legs. Release the head completely. If the hamstrings are tight, you hold the legs, elbows out to the side, head just go. Otherwise, head to the floor, hands underneath the elbows. You build a beautiful building here. Now, stay for one breath. Then release the arms, place them underneath the shoulders again. Look forwards, contact spine action. 
and then from here zigzag your feet in, in, in until your legs are straight and you feel you can now come up with a straight spine. Hands on the hips, extend into the crown of the head and up the thumb. Feet together. Now a little word here. Those of you that want to extend this practice into a longer practice, this is the moment where you do your shishasana, your headstand. Press the pause, do your headstand carefully, beautifully, take your time, and then we start again. So the pose before we start winding down is Bharatajasana. And we do the Bharatajasana on the chair. And I'm just out of Pablo's way here. You're going to sit on your chair, actually I can sit here, and sit with your side to the body. For you, it will possibly be your right side. And I put two phones between my knees. Okay, so let's all get to this position. We face each other. I've got my left side to the back base. You've got your right side. Feet are underneath the, the knees. Take your arms up to the ceiling, stretch. Turn to face the back breast and hold the sides of the back breast. Lift your spine on the inhalation and on the exhalation you turn. Turn the abdomen. Lift your spine. Turn your chest. Keep the uh, elbows wide. Slightly bend to bring the shoulder blades in. Inhale, lift and last turning is taking that right shoulder back. Now lift into the crown of the head. Don't drop the chin. Keep the spine straight and have that soft winding action around the spine. Then lift the spine, come back to center and release. Now you can either turn your chair around or you can just swing your feet. I'm going to turn and then you've got your left side to the chair. Sit with the feet apart and the phones, the phones between the knees makes space in your lower back. It makes this a spacious twist. Sit upright, take the arms up. Inhale, and then as you exhale, turn. Stay upright, don't lean into the chair or lean back, just stay upright. Keep the pelvis steady. Inhale, up, exhale, turn the abdomen. Inhale, up, lengthen the spine, exhale, turn the chest. Inhale up and last turn is taking the shoulder back. The head follows, don't force the head. Chin slightly lifted, lift the spine, arms up and release. Okay, so now you're going to have a restorative pose. Supta Bada So you're going to have a bolster. And on top of this bolster, you are going to put support for your head. It can be a foam block, a blanket. There's a golden rule and I will show now. So there we go. I'm going to have to move Pablo soon. We get the blocks ready for in case we need them. Be warm enough and have your strap close by. Okay. So let me demonstrate for you here. Sorry, Pablo. My darling. Okay. So I sit in front of my mat, uh, uh, in front of my bolster. We are going to bring the strap. Let's do it together. You sit in front of your bolster, we all go, and then I'll just show. Strap is over the body. So it's just over my lower back here. Then I put the strap over my feet and I make sure that the strap is pulling towards me. So move it on either side of the feet so that you can pull towards you. Then make sure the strap is over your lower back, not your waist. There can be a little gap between the support and you just watch what I do before you go down. So as I go down, I pull the strap in. I bring the support until my neck is completely supported and my head and then if you know that you've got groins that sometimes talk you give them help you support them from here always make sure the chin is slightly lower than the forehead so get yourself in your position sutta bara use that strap 
for your legs. In try not to have the buckle on flesh, there's always a few golden rules. The two feet are pressing evenly. Depending on your knees, you will know how far you can pull those legs in. And as I say, if you need support for the thighs and the groin, for the groins, you support the thighs. And you can use the support to whatever height is good for you. And it's normally not right into the hips. You pull the, you put them on the place where they work. Now, palms to the ceiling, chin slightly to the chest. And you bring yourself to the awareness of your breath. Relax your tongue. Relax your eyes. Soften the throat. And then bring that awareness to your breath. Allow the abdomen to be completely soft, the face is soft, and all the breath awareness is now happening in the chest area. Have a full exhalation. Inhale fully. Normal full inhalation. Hold the breath for a brief moment and then with control and keeping the face soft, do a long, slow, quiet exhalation. When you reach the end of that exhalation, normal inhalation, normal exhalation. Take a full inhalation. exhalation, gentle exhalation. When you are at the end, you breathe normally. So no force, no sudden movements. Keep the chest lifted at all times and then normal breaths. We do one more round like this together. Exhale and inhale fully. Do your controlled, longer exhalation breath, your ujjayi breath, keeping the face soft and the abdomen quiet. When you reach the end of that breath, I want you to have your normal breath in between and then do one more of these breaths on your own, really exploring that exhalation breath. Make it soft and gentle, keeping the chest lifted until the very end. Go, let the body relax. And then bend your legs, roll over to the right side and come up to a seated position. One more restorative pose with breath awareness. So, you're going to take your four foams, all three foams should be enough. If this is too much for your body, you can use your bolster, you will figure it out. So what I do here is, and I'll show it from the back, and then I'll show it from the side. So what I do is, I bend legs distance away from the wall, and I insert my foams or the bolster underneath my sacrum, and then I stretch my legs up to this, the, the, this, the um, mandala. And from here, you make sure that it's right supporting your sacrum and you're going to relax. 
So it's a very deep relaxing pose here. When you come out, you take them out one by one, a little bit slower than this, and you relax for a moment. Okay, so if you didn't see what I did, I'm going to show you from the side. In the meantime, if you know what I did, you get yourself in the position. Using whatever support you have, it can even be for a books, whatever you've got. So it's one by one. Don't let get your t-shirt trapped. Use your hands to get alignment here. And then once you're here, you imagine the wall and your legs are up the wall. Abdomen soft. Okay. yourself in such a way that you really feel your lower back well supported and your chest open and in this position tuck your chin slightly into your chest to elongate the back of your head. Roll the shoulders back, shoulder blades in and palms to the ceiling. Now bring yourself back to the awareness of your breath. Now, with this breath awareness, you exhale and you inhale. Exhale fully. Now, focus on a long, slow inhalation. Allow yourself that moment. 
You've done well with your practice. Thank you. Don Pablo Costa.